Welcome to Sermon q and I'm Pastor Alex here in the studio with Pastor Craig and Pastor Michael. And on May 22nd, 2022, we preached the fifth sermon in the series, Jesus Is. We talked about Jesus is the bread of life. And so coming out of that, uh, he deals with this. He says this thing, hey, I am the bread of life. And people have taken this to mean certain things. So our question today, Pastor Michael, mm-hmm. is this. Is Lutheran communion biblical? And the the word that we've come up for that the the phrase the word that they use is consubstantiation. So yeah. is that biblical? All right. So when we when we answered the question about is transubstantiation the Roman Catholic view biblical, mm-hmm. the answer was one hundred percent no. Okay. So I'm going to give a little bit different answer for this this one, okay. and I would say the answer is. Okay. No. Um, Now, there's there's a chance. Let me let me preface. So what you're telling me is (laughs) there's there's a chance. chance. Um, So, as we have said in other episodes, when we navigate different Christian traditions, Mm -hmm. um, the goal is not to be offensive. The goal is not to upset people unnecessarily. The goal is not to make people mad at us. We don't really need any more people not liking us at the end of the day. Like, you know what I mean? That's not what we want. We want to submit every idea under the authority of the word of God. We want to make sure we're interpreting scripture Mm -hmm. correctly in its context. Mm -hmm. And we are thinking biblically and rightly about everything. But one of the challenges is that, um, and this applies to us as well, is that we bring all of our baggage, all of our culture, all of our lenses, all of our idols to the text. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that, that our brains and hearts need to be true Uh, even though the Bible doesn't teach it explicitly or even implicitly. And so we pull things out of the text that are sometimes not even there. And so we, this is the joy of preaching it with the three of us regularly is we can like check each other and be like, no, that's a bad idea. That's your brain. That's not scripture. I noticed you looked at me when you said that. Well, I mean, frequently. Yeah, right. (laughs) Well, we have to, you know, (laughs) come on. (laughs) So, all right. uh, Consubstantiation, very simply, uh, it's the view that the bread and the wine um, as a, as the, as the priest blesses them, they don't, like the Catholics believe, turn literally into the body, the flesh of Jesus and the blood of mm-hmm. Jesus. But what they say is that the presence of right. Christ is with, under, and around the elements. It's an it's an interesting view. Mm-hmm. Um, now, let's just pull, I want to read this because I think, I thought this was really helpful. The prefix con in consubstantiation means with and says the bread does not become the body of Jesus, but coexists with the body of Christ so that the bread is both a bread and the body of Christ. The same thing is true of the wine. It does not become the blood of Jesus. That's transubstantiation, but coexists with the blood of Jesus so that the wine is both wine and the, the blood of Jesus. Okay. So I appreciate a couple things about consubstantiation. Number one, I appreciate that it's not a part of a sacramental view of salvation right. like the Roman yes. Catholics have, number one. Uh, number two, I appreciate that they're rejecting explicit the idea that in like in transubstantiation, the uh, body, the, basically Jesus is being re-sacrificed again. over and right. over yeah. and over mm-hmm. again uh, because the initial sacrifice wasn't sufficient. I appreciate that they're rejecting that. I appreciate that they do not believe this is a part of their salvation. Wonderful. This is why I am like 99.8% as opposed to 100% opposed to uh, transubstantiation. Mm -hmm. So a couple of reasons why, two actually mainly. Number one, when you open up John 6, which John 6 is hands down the most controversial chapter in all of the Gospels. Mm. It has created more arguments on the issue of election and predestination and then on communion mm-hmm. than any other chapter in all right. the Gospels. Feel, you're thinking about that right now. You're like, I do am, I yeah. agree? I challenge you to disagree. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I will defer if I'm wrong. I'm 99.8% yeah. <laughs> sure that you might be wrong. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm at it. Um, but it is a very it controversial, very controversial yes. chapter yes. and it creates tons and tons of fights. And when you read this, it is impossible, and I, and I mean this, impossible to read it slowly, thoughtfully, and in context, and walk away believing it has anything to do whatsoever with communion at all. Right. I mean, it's just not there. Yeah. So um, to take- Nor did the people that were there listening to it understand not it at that all. way. Right. Nothing. Yeah. No. Well, nor, nor did the Apostle Paul, as he looks back and teaches on communion, ever reference it like this. Correct. The, the emphasis was on- um, Remembrance. Remembrance, yeah. memorial. That's the most important yep. thing. So uh, I think this is really important to understand. Nobody took it this way. Nobody. And, it, and if we're being really honest, okay, so like we said earlier, we're not above any of us transferring to the text our own mm-hmm. culture, values, needs, et cetera. 
So Martin Luther um, did wonderful things and that he he reclaimed, if you will, the purity of the gospel from the Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And he led a movement to mm -hmm. put scripture first and to keep the gospel pure, uh, to expose corruption. Incredible. Like, I, I'm not here to diss on Martin Luther. Like, nobody's going to write a story. Like, if anybody wrote a story about our lives, it'd be filled with a bunch of stupidity as well, right? Yes. So what Martin Luther did was wonderful. Um, but it was interesting as he grew up a Roman Catholic his whole life, this sacramental view of salvation, it's in your bones, blood, yeah. and marrow. It right. is hard to get out. And it's the only thing. There was no other churches. Right. There was no other religions on the planet. Yeah. Right. It was only the Roman Catholic. It's the only yeah. view there and is. It yeah. was only the Roman Catholic teaching. Yep. So for him to break away from the Roman Catholic teaching mm. was literally, and when he went to his trial, uh, the accusation was, are you alone keeper of the truth? Yeah. And Ooh. that had to be t mm -hmm. tough for him because yeah. literally his answer was, I got to believe that I am. Because he's the only one making this break. Now, there's yeah. been other people throughout history that have tried to make the break, and the yeah. priests were corrupt, and they, and were, they all got killed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And they all got killed for yeah. their stand. And so Martin Luther, at his trial, thinks he's going to die too, yeah. and he said, "God help me, that this is the stand I have to take." Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. He um, he he was infiltrated. His brain is infiltrated yeah. with Roman Catholic teaching. Yep. Yeah. So for him, when your whole life is bound up in in my salvation is connected to the quote Eucharist. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you're creating now what would become Lutheranism, right? Or hopefully a word-based gospel centered view yeah, he of- didn't, He didn't like that either. He didn't like the heaven, the, yeah. the thing named after him. Right. <laughs> uh, then he lost that battle. So, yeah. but you know, he, he thankfully took the aspects of transubstantiation that were anti-gospel mm -hmm. and removed them, which is why the Lutheran view of salvation is not anti-gospel. I think it's just not, taught in scripture. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but he, he, it's like, he just couldn't go far enough, but imagine, I, I, I imagine him trying to start a movement. Uh, I mean, functionally a new denomination, if you will, like, and all these people, all they've ever known is that my connection to Jesus is through the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. And then you tell them that was wrong. It meant nothing in right. terms of all of that. It's simply a reminder. That is a that is a cataclysmic shift that he couldn't even make. Yeah. Um, and so even, even Calvin got, got caught up in some of this stuff and, yeah. and, um, and it, it really took another, I don't know how many, 50, hundred years for people to be like, mm, I don't think you went far enough. Actually, like right. we need to be actually committed to scripture, like it, like in this subject. So when I look at this, I, I, number one, I can't, um, I, I can't support it because I can't, it's just nowhere in the Bible. Right. It's a lesser bat. It's a, it's a lesser version of an already bad interpretation of transubstantiation. Right. So, right, and that's that's kind of the thing that we talked about as we discussed this. So, was, uh, Martin Luther was intentionally contradicting an already bad teaching yeah. on something, and it, as as a way of developing theology, that's probably not like the best practice, right? We but it's usually it. how but, theology is developed, right, yep. unfortunately. Right. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's like somebody. I mean, this is my metaphor in my brain. It's like somebody saying, "Hey." Well, this is gonna be a little too close for some people maybe watching, but it's like, hey, the entire way that you do worship is wrong stylistically. Yeah. So we'd be tempted to shift one or two instruments or something. And no, when in reality, somebody would say, no, the whole thing needs to die. Right. And you yeah. need to just go, you know, it's, it's like that cataclysmic of a thought. Mm -hmm. And when we shift, we usually shift in increments. And unfortunately, transubstantiation was a shift that needed to be made in total Undo to a right. different, yeah. completely yeah. different perspective. Yep. Um, but that that's hard for anybody. Or? And if you're thinking, the more I eat, the more sure I am of getting to heaven. Oh my goodness. That's, yeah. I mean, that is the core of yeah. our mm -hmm. fear, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think he had to hang on to that just a little bit more than yeah. we feel comfortable with, you know, 500 years later. Later, okay, so so think about 500 years later, mm -hmm. Roman Catholics who leave Roman Catholicism still deal with Catholic guilt in a very profound mm -hmm. way. Imagine the Catholic guilt. Imagine the, yeah. the feeling yeah. like my salvation is connected to this. My assurance is connected to these sacraments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now you're taking away everything that I was assured in. And even though you know the gospel is true, that your assurance is in the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. When you, when your heart and your mind have been formed yeah. by sacramental salvation, yeah. hard it is hard to break, hard. even though your brain yeah. might know your heart, yeah. you know, like, it's just like, uh, what if, yeah. you know, that's hard. So the bottom line, Jesus does not teach this. No. Uh, nowhere does he even indicate nope. that, that the, it's this a is what he's driving at. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, it is by grace that we have been saved through faith. Yep. And thank it you, Martin not, Luther, for that. Not that's of ourselves. Well, it's Jesus, but of, yeah, and Martin right. Luther for and reclaiming that, it. It's yeah, a gift right. of God, yeah. not of works, lest anyone should boast. Amen. That's so, Amen. That's yeah. good. Thank you. Well, thank you guys both for that. And thank you for joining us. Please stick around for more questions on Sermon Q&A.